Hey there, fourth and fifth grade friends. Uh, this is another kind of funky week where you're gonna have two weeks to complete this assignment. So just like back in our uh, block three where you had weeks one and two to make your abstract expressionist drawing or painting, in block four now you are going to be having two weeks to complete your paper sculpture project. Now from your homeroom teacher, you should have received a black paper paper clip to that you had between like 18 and 20 lines strips of paper and you also had some shapes okay your job this week is to create a three-dimensional paper sculpture using all of your lines and all of your shapes now on the google slide there is a picture that looks like a little bulletin board with a lot of different folding techniques on it you have two weeks to do this so even if you watch half of the video this week and then half of the video next week, you should have time to complete a full sculpture. Now you might remember back in first grade, we did paper sculptures with lines and now you're thinking I'm a fourth or fifth grader. This is a little beneath me. However, when we did these in first grade, you used your flat piece of paper, you left it flat and you built on top of it. Your job, now that you are in fourth and fifth grade, is to think about how you could transform this flat piece of paper into a three-dimensional platform or space, and then using the techniques from the video, add on your shapes to create your sculpture. Let's go over that again. Fourth and fifth graders, you're not leaving your paper flat, okay? Every student in school is making a paper sculpture. It looks like everybody has the same materials. However, the directions are different. So in kindergarten and first grade, they are leaving their paper flat. They have 10 lines. They are doing simple folds. They are adding them on like we did when you were in first grade. In second and third grade, they have a few more lines and they are going to be attempting some of the more complex folds. In fourth and fifth grade, you have to transform your two dimensional platform space into a 3D surface and then build on that. Some things to think about when you're building your paper sculpture. One, it has to support itself, which means it cannot be have to be held. It needs to be able to stand on the table or on the ground without falling over. Two, it should not collapse on itself, which means that you want to build a strong enough base to hold up anything you add to the top. If it's top heavy, it won't be able to support itself. After all, we are only working with paper and paper is flimsy. So think about how you could fold the paper or change the paper in order to create a strong, solid base. So step one, transform your flat paper into a three-dimensional platform for you to work on. Step two, watch that video. And as the artist in that video, as the art teacher is creating some different three-dimensional uh, shapes that you can make with paper, I want you to try those but also I am going to link with this, my video for the younger students about basic folds. So if you were like, oh my gosh, I remember doing that. How did I do it? Watch this video all the way to the end, then try the more complicated stuff. You have two weeks to do it. I do not have the assignment up for week one because it is not due until week two. So you will see the assignment for these to be turned in next week under 3D paper sculpture assignment. I'm so looking forward to one, how you transform your base so that it's not flat. And two, all the different ways you turn these two dimensional flat lines into three dimensional sculptures. When I say transform your base into a three-dimensional shape, what am I talking about? When I keep telling you you need a platform, you need to create a space that is 3D before you start making your sculptural lines on top, what does that even mean? Well, like I said, everybody else is keeping their paper flat, just like we've always done. They're putting their flat paper down and they're building on top of it so that they get something very similar to what we did in first grade. Now my first grade and kindergartners are leaving it like this. My second graders and third graders are using some of those advanced techniques from the video to add to theirs because they have more than 10 lines. You guys have to go one step further and create even more. So how do we make that two-dimensional paper into a 3D base? 
the same way you folded your lines, right? You could fold it in half. So now instead of a flat paper to build on, you have a little TP tent to build on. Now if that's going to continue to flatten out, what you can do is just like on your other lines, fold feet. Once you fold little feet on it, it may stay, stay and stand up a little bit better. So this is one way to create a 3D base that you can then build your sculpture on top of. Another way to create a 3D base would be to simply roll it. So these are the same directions that you would be doing for the smaller ones, except now it is your base. So if I took this, just like if I made a circle with a strip of paper, I'm gonna add dots of glue, I'm gonna roll it. You wanna hold it for probably longer than 10 seconds, I would say. If you have tape or a stapler, you can always use that too. I stick to glue because I don't like seeing the yucky tape lines, but if you're good at hiding it, go for that. So I'm gonna hold this together. Now I'm gonna use my paper clips. You should have a paper clip that was clipped onto yours just to help me hold this together a little bit longer while I build. Okay, so this would be, oops, it's coming apart. 10 seconds wasn't long enough. I'm gonna use another paper clip for now. Again, if you have a stapler or tape, you can always use that to help you. But look, now you have a three dimensional space that you can build on all sides coming out of the top. That is an option for your base also. So right now we've done two different options that you could build for your base. Please be creative, continue to think of more. I'm gonna show you another platform. Instead of doing the triangle, what if our platform was more of a square, right? You could lay that on your table, then you can decide how you wanna have things maybe coming out of it, going on top of it, going to the sides of it. If you made it into a zigzag, then you have another base is now three-dimensional, you can build off of it. I hope this is clearing up, look, I could even do it like this. Woo. So I hope this is clearing up how to turn your flat shape into a three-dimensional base. Now your base isn't black, it maybe is, you know, that might've been what you chose, but your base is just whatever your big paper is, whether you have it sideways and things are coming out of them all over, or whether you just build out of the sides, or maybe you're just building it in the tunnel I don't know what you're gonna do yet. That's why I'm so excited to see how fourth and fifth graders create this simple line folding project. So use those simple introductive techniques that I just went over with you, but then combine in those advanced techniques from the longer video to really make it unique. Do you have to use every single line and every single technique? Absolutely not, okay? It is just showing you how to make them Maybe you really like doing uh, the square spiral where you cut, 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 and then it pops out and hangs down. Maybe you wanna add 10 of those onto yours. That's up to you. And if you run out of the paper I gave you, you can do two things. This is a two week project, so you should have started it one week, you're gonna finish it another week. You can come to me and say, Miss Sikowski, I see you every day at school. I need more paper, and I will give it to you. Or two, if you have paper at home, you can cut out your own lines and shapes and absolutely use those. So if you're all virtual, email me, reach out to me in Google Hangouts. If I see you in school, see me in the hallway, stop by my classroom, I'm at bus duty, just say, Ms. Zikowski, I need more squares or I need more rectangles or I need more strips of paper and I'll get you what you need. I cannot wait to see how these look. I am so excited about this. All right, go for it. Reach out if you need anything.